The handicrafts of the country reflect their cultural moorings. Pakistan is no exception. Like other visual arts, handicrafts in Pakistan are the expression of the feelings and attitude of the craftsmen in relation to their environment and social and cultural patterns. They proudly share their age-long heritage and tradition with their 1100 million people living in the four provinces, Sindh, the NWSP, Punjab and Balochistan, which comprise Pakistan. The climate, geophysical and ecological conditions of each province determine the lifestyle of the people, which collectively add color, depth, freshness, and innovation to the industry known as the cottage industry. Cottage industry, however, cannot be distinguished from what is termed as handicrafts. Both are inseparable. This may be the reason why our agreed definition of what constitutes handicrafts is not possible. What is generally acceptable is that articles that are prepared with locally manufactured tools and materials are handicraft products. Small gadgets and machines are also used which are operated both by hands and feet. Most of our people live in villages. Naturally, therefore, a network of handicrafts of various types and description have developed and flourished in every village and small towns approximately covering an area of 3,10,403 square miles. Quite a few village folks have taken to handicrafts as part-time work. Besides being a supplement to their income, they find the occupation absorbing. They give more to it than their skill and labor. They put their heart into it. Women comprise half of Pakistan's population. They are marching forward in step with men. They are also involved in the production of various handicrafts in a big way. In fact, some of the cottage industries are considered as their exclusive preserve. This is a way to provide financial support to their families. Similarly, a sizable number of youngsters, both girls and boys, get involved and lend support to their elders. The skilled hands of today have inherited the centuries-old expertise and traditions handed over to them by their ancestors. Pottery making is a time-tested ancient skill. Little has changed fundamentally since then. The people here are engaged in making pottery on the pattern of their predecessors. The Indus Valley civilization has treasured them in abundance. Earthenware of this time is hardly in existence anywhere in the world. Pottery making seems to have reached its zenith. In Pakistan, some samples as old as 7,000 years have been discovered and are displayed in museums. Earthen wares in geometrical designs of the Islamic period are also available. 
The prominent centers of pottery making in Pakistan are Peshawar, capital of the NWFP, Gujarat, Bahamalpur, Hala, Nasirpur, and Salem in the Sindh province. The urban wares made in these centers are delicate and shining as compared with those made in the European countries because they absorb the brightness of sunshine, a free and liberal gift of nature to this part of the world. The colors of the urban wares of various regions differ from each other due to the variety of clay and weather conditions. The urban wear in and around Bahamalpur is a class by itself. It is extremely thin, delicate and elegant. It is therefore called thin paper pottery. Another distinct handicraft of this region is clay styles. Nasirpur, Hala and Multan are its important centers. This work is called Kashi, a name derived from an Iranian city Kashan, a famous center for grey tiles. The designs carved in blue color on these tiles speak for themselves. These tiles used in the mosques in Sindh and southern Punjab enormously enhance their beauty. Pakistan is the land of silver fiber. The most ancient samples of cotton and cotton clothes are found in this region. In most of the villages, house looms have been installed, which produce various articles of daily use. In ancient times, almost every house had a loom or at least a spinning wheel. Different types of objects are also made of cotton fiber. The dexterity of the craftsman leaves everyone dazed when the finished goods are displayed. Kadir is very popular for daily wear. The aristocracy also uses it as a fashion. Kadir absorbs heat and one feels comfortable. The case and Susi cotton carpets are produced in villages of Sindh and Punjab. Susi, Motro and Gudbu are the types of clothes which are made of cotton fabric. They always remain in great demand, particularly among the women folk. Reason, they look simple, elegant and they are inexpensive as well. Ajrat is a multi-purpose cotton sheet. Predominant colors are dark blue and maroon with a sprinkling of white base in a variety of designs. One single adjuric requires over 6,000 block printing, a painstaking exercise indeed. Adjuric passes through some 16 phases before completion. Adjuric designs are profusely copied on other cotton garments. The art of turning goat's hair into thin threads is another painstaking exercise. Besides garments, various other objects are also prepared with these threads. Embroidery in cotton, silk, wool, gold and silver threads has a tradition of its own in Pakistan. It is essentially a folk art and almost a monopoly of women. Every growing girl has to learn it, and unless she does this, her credibility as a useful family member remains in question. There are a number of common factors in Sindhi and Balochi embroidery. Glasswork is also part of embroidery, no doubt a very delicate and nerve-breaking exercise. The local name of this type of work is Javak. This fine glasswork, when completed with skill, turns a coarse, ordinary cloth into a brocade, a fabric dream of women. Another type of embroidery is called khamak. In this type of embroidery, glass is not superimposed and tucked. Threads are woven in a fashion that both sides of a piece of cloth do not look similar. Yet another typical embroidery is called mosim, season. The embroidery gives the impression of changing seasons.
Northern areas fascinate the tourists not only by their unbelievable scenic beauty, but also by the exquisite embroidery work. Women of Kalash, with their embroidered black headgears and embroidered loose shirts, Sango, can be distinctly spotted from a distance. Their headgears or caps are of a very special make, not in use anywhere else. The cap is worn with a little tilt on the right side of the head, making the wearer look conspicuous and commanding. The cap at the back has long thick threads which hang down from neck to waist below. They look elegant and pretty. A rose or some other flower is generally displayed on the cap. Some embroidery work is also done with oyster. Sindh is famous for its colorful patchwork called Brali. It is made of old dyed pieces of cotton cloth. Gindi of Punjab is more or less similar to Rally. These articles are used specially for respected guests and VIPs. Useless objects in the hands of craftsmen not only become useful but also sought after. The skill pays off. Wild weeds are found in abundance on the banks of rivers and lakes in Pakistan. A lot of articles of daily use are made by this material, such as baskets, stools, fans, cradles, etc. They look pretty, handy and soft, thanks to the skill of craftsmen. Date palm is of little value but turns invaluable in the magic hands of a craftsman. In Balochistan, they are called peesh. Baskets, mats and other useful things are made of the palm. This slipper is made of date palm called Savas. Various articles are made of the beautiful feathers of peacocks as well. These articles provide a sense of relief to the people living in the sizzling heat of the deserts. Rain or no rain, use of these articles embellished with multicolors creates soothing effects. Studs add beauty and sophistication to handicraft products. The sea waves continue to offer their gifts to the shores without asking, for instance oysters and shells. These have added a new dimension to our handicraft industry. They assume attractive shapes and designs in the hands of craftsmen. Marvelous articles are made of the generous gifts of the sea waves. The body shapes of oyster and shells change, but not the spirit. The spirit remains intact. Carpet making in Pakistan is indeed the biggest handicraft industry. 90% of foreign exchange earning comes from it. Only 10% comes from the rest. Saudi Arabia, Iran and Turkey have left their deep impact on the art of carpet weaving in Pakistan. It reached a high point when the Mughal Emperor Akbar introduced the craft of making piled craft in Lahore by engaging the services of Persian weavers. Since then, Lahore has continued to be a very important center.
Carpet making is a highly intricate exercise. A single quality carpet needs over 500 knots in a small space of 5 inches. Knots increase progressively depending on quality and finish. One skilled hand is only able to do a few hundred knots in a day. It therefore takes months to complete a hand knotted carpet. It is amazing to note that raw material comprises only 20% of the total cost of the carpet while the remaining 80% goes to labor. Delicate and soft hands are needed for this work. Young boys and girls are employed for this purpose. Carpets perform the task of introducing the history and culture in foreign lands. Important centers of carpet making in Pakistan are Karachi, Lahore, Multan, Peshawar, Bahawalpur, Dera Ghazi Khan, Hyderabad, Sindh, Liaquatpur, and the Desert of Thar. Northern areas of Pakistan are surrounded by snow-clad mountains where the main profession of the people is livestock farming. The wool acquired from sheep is largely used for carpet making. The waste of wool is also utilized by a process of pressing and blowing. The product thus made is called manda. It is further beautified by embroidery. Geometrical designs are woven through horizontal bands in various colors. Animals and foreign designs also feature in manda. In Pakistan, camel hides have played a significant role in providing a boost to the handicraft industry. The hides and bones of the camel are raw material for various handicrafts. Multan is famous internationally for lamps, vases and jars made of camel hides. One good thing about camel hide is that it can be easily molded into various shapes. The raw hides go through various stages before assuming the shape of fine finished products.
Noble and Onyx have added a new dimension to handicrafts. In the end of the USB and the latest time, Noble and Onyx are found in abundance. Karachi is the biggest center of this industry. The industry was non existent until the construction work on the mausoleum of Kajazan, the founder of the nation, began in 1960. After completion of the mausoleum, the industry received a tremendous boost. The craftsmen gained vast experience within the span of a short time. They shared their experience and skill with their fellow workers, and new avenues opened for the marble and onyx industry. Kebra is famous the world over for its salt range. While salt is used in food and medicines, stone salt is used for decoration items. Pakistan is blessed with enormous forest wealth. Rosewood, softwood, saigon and walnut trees provide various types of wood. Craftsmen have used this wood for manifestation of their artistic acumen. Muzaffarabad, the capital of Azad Kashmir, Rawalpindi, Lahore and Karachi are big markets for wooden furniture and other wooden products. Furniture is made with or without joint wood. The art of wood carving has produced fantastic masterpieces. It was not long ago that the art of engraving on wood reached its pinnacle. Now only glimpses are seen here and there. Chinyot in Punjab is famous for brasswork artistically engraved on wooden pieces with pigments of ivory, horns of animals and plastic pieces. The craftsmen of Kashmir, Kherpur and Khanot excel in this art which is called Jindi. Through constant rubbing, wood pieces are chiseled and painted. This process makes the shining wooden pieces as if made of metal. In this region, there's an old tradition to present metal utensils on the occasion of marriages. The markets here are full of utensils and other household tidbits made of brass, copper and German silver, giving beautiful shapes for decorative purposes. Jewelry enhances beauty. It is considered a mark of femininity. In the East, it is a weakness of women. Jewelry also serves as a monetary cover for difficult days and therefore jealously guarded. Jewelry making is quite a difficult pursuit. Metal is melted and designs are prepared by blowing. Ornaments in this part of the world reflect the influence of Greece, Rome, Turkey, Iran and also of Buddhist civilization. Even today, our village women adorn their bodies with heavy jewelry. Women in cities, however, go for light ornaments.
Ornaments made of hides, glasses and marbles are also catching up. Girls love dolls all over the world. Dolls no doubt reflect the cultural pattern of a country. Toy shops in Pakistan, like shops elsewhere, are full of dolls of all types, sizes and description. They are simple, attractive, colourful and tempting. The marriage between a female and a male doll is a fascinating pastime of growing girls. They leave their own dreams of future life in doing so. Nomads have a little world of their own. Most of them are good craftsmen. Handicrafts are their pastime as well as a source of earning. Wherever they can for short sojourn, they improvise their own market in and around for selling their craft. From villages, they move on to the cities during big festivals to sell off their products in the hope of fetching good price. Big cities have now become flourishing markets for handicrafts. Quite a few big towns have exclusive handicraft markets which are a rendezvous for the discerning buyers, particularly the foreign buyers. These handicrafts are a constant reminder to the beholder that there is no limit to the creativity of skillful hands.